<clears throat> Greetings, everybody. Um, uh, welcome to our session. And um, I'm really, really happy to be chosen to be a moderator for my dear colleague, Masar, for this session. And this session particularly is oriented is oriented to give you some more inside story and information about the environment <clears throat> situation, about the social, economic, educational background of the students uh, from different African region. In that cases, you have here Tigiri, who is located and works in uh, Herare, Zimbabwe, and we're going to host um, are seen as a speaker who is located in Togo as well. So I don't know, shall we go in meanwhile? Thank you for uh, thank you everybody for joining us. Uh, so you are welcome to to drop your questions in the chat box. So when we finish, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna try to uh, go through each of them and respond. Or you are absolutely work, welcome to raise your hand and unmute yourself and uh, engage into conversation as well. So. Um, I think uh, it, it's time, uh, it's time, so I've seen why, and just a little bit, I am located in Maputo, Mozambique as well, an international school, so uh, this is where kind of neighbors uh, all here. Um, so I've seen, I think we had a many discussion about, uh, about <clears throat> how do we rate the access of African young student, young uh, population um, to the world uh, international universities, whether they uh, whether these universities are um, <clears throat> in their next country or another continent, um, and uh, how how they make uh, their dreams possible to continue their studies internationally, and. Uh, First of all, I wonder how uh, to start with Arsene, how do, what do you say? How popular is international education within African students? I mean, in your case, what will be the rate or the ratio um, of all the students who are willing to continue studies in international education based on your experience? Arsene, can you unmute yourself? No? Oh, sorry, Tigeri. I don't, I don't sketch. see that. Yes, can you un yes. So we, I, I, can. Was, I apologize to everybody. Can you please, can you please mute your microphones because there is some uh, background noises coming and I'm not able to to help it. Yes, yes, Tigiri, let's let's go on. Let, let's let's talk about the, the situation you are facing in your school. Uh, great. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Kate, for that introduction. And also to answer your question uh, that you've just posed uh, in terms of the popularity of international institutions or university to African students. Uh, so I will answer that question in two approach uh, because you we found ourselves in two scenarios where we've got public schools, public schools which are run by government, by the government, and also we've got private schools, private schools which are run by the private sector. So in terms of where I'm sitting at uh, right now, in terms of or institution, we are very deliberate in terms of this uh, from grade nine, grade 10, as the, uh, as the transition to grade 10 and to grade 11 at our different partner schools. We expose them to information about these different international universities uh, that can advance their expertise and also make their skills and also their academic acumen. Uh, so in terms of the private schools, if I may say, they've got the structures which are set already. 
and they've got exchanges in terms of with these institutions where they visit and they give information sessions and web buffets at some point in time, and some even come physically. But on the other side of the coin, where we've got schools uh, which are operated uh, or which are run by the government, there's a huge disparity in that particular regard. And you find out that the popularity and the information about such uh, universities, I like the opening which was given by Mr. Fred, and he really highlighted uh, from an African perspective, considering his experiences, to say most of the students, they would have scored uh, great results in their final examinations, but they don't know about uh, Harvard. They don't know about MIT. They don't know about Stanford. They don't know about some of the greatest institutions uh, in India, some in the UK, and some in Canada. So basically I can say, and these are the institutions which constitute a number of students. If I'm talking in terms of the population, we can say 80% of our students in, are enrolled at our public institutions. Then a minority of 20% are in these private institutions. And this also has to do with issues of lack of counseling uh, school centers in our public schools. Uh, uh, here in Africa, specifically as I'm talking uh, from, from the Zimbabwean perspective. Thank you, Kent. Thank you, Tigere. So I see Arsene has joined us. Arsene, uh, good afternoon to you as well. Uh, so sorry, we, we had to start, but the first question was, uh, how, how do we rate the interest of African young students, um, um, interest of going uh, to study abroad in international universities? In your local situation, what, what would be the percentage of the students they want, they, they are very determined to do so? Uh, hello, everyone. Um, uh, sorry for joining late. Uh, my calendar was showing another time. Um, I, I'm happy to be joining uh, finally. Uh, so I'm representing Edilco Togo. Edilco Togo stands for Education, Leadership and Community Development in Togo. We're working with high achieving low income students and we're happy also to be uh, a member of the Hali uh, Network Group, uh, which is uh, working uh, very hard in the African continent to advance education, quality education and help high achieving low income students access higher education. So in my community, basically here in, in, in Northern Togo, uh, many students are willing to apply to different universities, basically in the United States, Canada, and also recently in Asia. So uh, due to the fact that we do not have a lot of opportunities for these students to access uh, university uh, studies or university uh, level in our home country, uh, around 80 or 90 percent are desiring to uh, to achieve their goals outside the country. I mean, applying to universities outside of their their home country. So, how do we manage to raise this interest and to encourage them to uh, to be applying to those universities? Uh, first, I have to say that our students are they are really uh, talented in terms of ac academic uh, performance and also leadership skills. So, which allow also uh, which allows them to uh, to be able to to get uh, access to different universities outside Togo. We have currently students who are in the United States, in Canada, in India, in South Korea, also in Africa, like in Ghana, South Africa. And uh, we, we think that uh, as time goes, the, the interest is increasing and they are much more likely to apply to different universities outside of their home country. Sorry, I was on, I was muted. Uh, yeah, uh, thank you, Arsene. So we, we have kind of a little bit different situation, but they're probably talking in a bigger scale when uh, not concentrated on the private schools. Uh, I kind of, uh, in a Mozambican situation, I share like a Tigris observation that 
probably the, the students who more they, they attend private edu private institutions and they they have access to international education like uh, a levels IB or American curriculum they are more kind of motivated than the students who are in in public public schools okay so and talking about this all this uh, interest that we are going to we're going to kind of raise in our students and inspire our students to to apply worldwide to to study worldwide in, in the universities um, i I'm, I'm wondering so because you are directly working with students i'm wondering what is the students understanding when they when they come to you first how well this culture or maybe tradition or a job of university guidance counselor uh, this 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 job is um, is developed in in your areas yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. thank you kids uh, uh, first, when students come to us, you know, they, they, they don't have any idea about the environment uh, uh, at the university and what it means, like uh, the application process, what it means to apply to a university and also for the careers that they have to choose. So some, some students may come to us and ask, yeah, hey, sir, so I would like to, to go abroad and continue my studies, but I do not know what to choose exactly. What do you propose uh, for me? So they are sometimes expecting uh, from the counselor to make a proposal for them. And some also come with maybe something that they would like to, to, to study, but without knowing where exactly to, to go. So, and it is up to the counselor to, uh, to navigate that uh, situation with the, the applicant and help the applicant understand what it means to apply to a university. What are the, the different options available to different areas? And they may come and tell you that I would like to go to the, to the United States, but without knowing which kind, what kind of uh, university to go. Is it a public one, a private one? What size of university are, are they uh, looking for? So it is, uh, the, the work is a big, higher for the, a bit higher for the, the counselor himself to explain all uh, the, the situation to the, to the applicant. And another thing is regarding their, their parents also, because some students come to you and tell you that they would like to pursue their studies outside of their home country, but without having also the, uh, how can I say that, the permission of their, their parents. And we often face that problem because uh, some parents may come to tell you that, oh, we, I did not want my student to go to this country or to that university. So all these things we need to, to work with uh, the, the student and with the parent as well. Thank you, Arsene. Tigre, what about you? How, how, how well do your students know about those opportunities? Uh, great. Uh, thank you so much, Kate. Answering to that question, I think we are, we are deliberate uh, here at Star Leadership Academy as we enroll students who are coming from these public uh, institutions, public schools, and a, a few, they now come from the private uh, schools. In terms of our curriculum, or in terms of our modules, one of the modules uh, that we then now are deliberate and then having them go through is the aspect of having a component to be able to appreciate diversity. And we have leveraged on that one uh, because we have had students who come from different nations. Uh, we have had students from Burundi, Zimbabwe, Lesotho, and DRC. And on its own, it has given them a platform to correlate with one another. Uh, and this is out of the understanding that they've got different cultures coming from different beliefs, but being able to formulate uh, something like a team. So before they come through, uh, they don't have such information. And why are we so deliberate? Because from our end, we, we say these are academically gifted students, like the students that are sent indicated that they target. And uh, if we place them at an institution which gives them uh, the best uh, of their education, like any of our Ivy League schools, any of uh, international universities uh, that are able to just enhance the expertise are able to, uh, to, 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 to provide a passage for them. But one critical factor that 
uh, then lies is the aspect of them being able to to be able to acclimatize in such uh, environments uh, because you have had students who can even suffer from cultural shock and everything else. So as very deliberate during our gap year of leadership training that they go through that particular module and program. And also because we have had some of our students uh, will go for the IB program at Waterford uh, Kamshaba in Swaziland. And recently we've got one who went to Waterford uh, UWC USA. And uh, just that preparation then now helps them. So when you compare before they come through and when they graduate, the difference is so visible. And unfortunately, as I've said, is you draw back to most of our students who are in these public institutions. Uh, and let's say they get this opportunity, they don't have this information. And most probably, if they, are, they, are, they, 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 they if they don't have an agent or someone or a counselor uh, within their spheres of influence who tells them about this information, they even face those issues of cultural shock issues of failing uh, to adapt and to work well with diversity and also to just appreciate some of the things that they do. And lastly, one thing uh, that we've also been deliberate to teach our students is the aspect of resilience, to be able to be able to cope and to thrive in the midst of adversity. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Tigir. Thank you, Arsene. Yeah, that's very interesting because that is um, to share sharing from my um, experience, whatever I have in Mozambique, I have the communication in South Africa, <laughs> and I've been into several West African countries and very often talk to them. I can totally relate to whatever you said, because uh, sometimes we tell them, okay, come on, like, uh, let's attend. This is the amazing university, university you need to uh, you need to know what is that and the students sometimes like you see that they listen but okay that's very nice studies but what I can do with those studies later these are like a, the questions that my students usually have I mean uh, can I um, there was a question one of my students our students in South Africa asked I mean uh, what kind of job should I should I take like uh, to have good good income and good salary yeah the students they are thinking about the future that gives them uh, financial sustainability, some, some security in their life. So th those are the questions I mostly um, uh, mostly receive. And there are some part of the students, they might be only concentrated on Ivy League universities and don't know anything beyond that. And if their profile is not high enough to jump that high, then uh, it's a little bit difficult to communicate with them. Uh, so um, what is like, a, can you name one, two, three questions, common questions that you most uh, frequently uh, get from your uh, students? Tigari, go ahead. Yeah. Or Arsene. Okay. okay, all right. So, um, uh, most of the times, uh, the kids are coming to us with the following questions related to uh, the scholarships, the, the kind of scholarship that they can, they can get. Like, what kind of scholarship is the university offering? Is it possible for me to get full uh, scholarship from that university? And I have to mention that I'm working with a high achieving low income student, and uh, we are also happy to to have that strong group of Hali Access Network that is uh, doing a great job in, in this field. So those questions are related to scholarships and also to the environment at the university. So what is the university like? Uh, am I going to be welcomed well? Uh, am I going to have some, some friends there? Is it possible for me to stay at ease as if I, I were at, uh, in my home country? And also uh, questions related to food uh to food uh, what is the food like so these are some of the questions that uh, students come to to us with and i may also add some of the questions related to uh the parents uh to parents some parents want to know whether where their kids are going is a, a secured place is it a place where they are accepted to to study and live Thank you, Arsene Diggory. 
Great. Uh, thank you, Kate. I had an opportunity to sit down with some of my students uh, before I joined this platform and uh, this discussion uh, this morning to just have uh, their voice uh, as we are having this discussion. So what I liked uh, is the aspect adding on to what Asen has said on the aspect of scholarships is in terms of the component of because there's the, the issue of academic scholarships and some will also have got sport will be looking forward for sporting scholarships so they would need to know which universities are really inclined towards the academic component and which ones are more inclined towards the sporting component uh, we've got a good cricketer uh, in some of our students is the one who raised this one so i found i should address it then the second one uh, that the that, that I also took note is the aspect of uh, the academic uh, requirements which are needed. What are the academic requirements per institution, or which most institutions really focus on? I know uh, for this past year we didn't have uh, SATs being mandatory to those who want to go and study in the US, but also for those maybe who would like to study in India, those who would like to study in the UK and Canada. What are the demands and requirements? Uh, then to the, to the third and the, and the last one is the aspect that if we study in these international uh, universities, are we guaranteed that we'll get uh, an offer or, or a job opportunity to start to work there and also to utilize the skills that we have gotten from such institutions in the foreign lands? Thank you. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you, Tigir. So that, that was interesting. Actually, yes, those are many, many questions. But uh, the first question that Arsene mentioned, that was the financial aid and scholarship. And I, I completely agree. Probably it, it comes if we read the questions or have a voting that one has the, will have the uh, highest number. And also what we find here at Anchor Education, we even yesterday we've been discussing with my team of counselors, what we found out that um, talking and discussing financial matters with the parents even, not, not mentioning even the students, it's not very easy uh, because I don't know whether there is a, the reservation comes from the cultural background or they, they, the students sometimes in most cases they have no idea about the finances, for example, how, how much their parents can afford. And uh, yeah, they, the parents are not very open in our area that what we have discovered. And what about you? Is it the same problem? Uh, answering to that one is the same. I'm glad that we are neighboring, uh, we are big and it's the same. And when it comes to issues of one of the components that we ask students uh, to score in terms of the income that they get, uh, maybe one of their parents get, and often we have, if we want to quantify it, about 70% of the students are disoriented in terms of the income that their parents uh, get uh, from their households. So basically, I think um, that's it. And to have these conversations with parents uh, from our end, it has been ongoing. And what we have been deliberate and encouraged them to do is the aspect of also taking responsibility uh, as parents when it comes to issues of educating of uh, their, their children. Thank you. Yeah, uh, we have the same the same situation here. And as I said it earlier, uh, most of the kids we are working with are coming from uh, low income background. So their parents are not uh, capable of paying their, their studies. So when they come, uh, their most concerns uh, are related to uh, financial aid. Sorry, uh, sorry, I wasn't with you. My apologies. Um, yeah, so 
talking about this, um, uh, I mean, we do have a mixed audience here. Some of them are school representatives and I see university reps as well. Hi again, everybody. Um, I want, um, because like, for example, uh, for the universities, for the universities, when they uh, probably it's always ch challenging as well, depending on the area of the school and the group, um, the students they are talking about, they are always probably concerned what kind of information to give to students. Is it going to be a presentation, how to file the application, how to obtain your recommendation or, or transcript and, and said, and what, what, what will be the inform, uh, what will be the, those necessary documents to provide them. But in our areas, and I see in your cases as well, and it's completely same with ENCO education counselors as well. Uh, our role goes like a, I mean, deeper than, than just university applications because you are doing career counseling as well. And, and sometimes you need to have some tools and those tools, for example, they might be expensive, they might be not accessible for you. And you, um, you as counselors in that case, like a probably, we a lot rely on our self-development, professional development courses or the, or the opportunities that we can find like IC3 that offers this, um, this session. So it, it is part of our professional development. I mean, do you agree? So if you, if you have, or do you think that maybe you as counselors are more kind of engaged in students life you have a bigger influence uh, on each student's future than the then uh, from other parts of the world where this counseling culture comes from many many decades ago and mostly the the students uh, get this technical support from the counselor to apply or to get admitted to the universities. What's your feeling about it? And how do you personally support yourself in, in professional development? What do you do yourself to, uh, to enrich your knowledge? Um, uh, thank you, Kate, for, for the question. And I would say in this domain of uh, counseling and guiding students, we need to, to get a lot of resources and to get connected to people who have gotten a lot of experience in the domain and then learn from them. So personally, I have been lucky to be uh, uh, one of the international teachers and uh, one of the scholars uh, 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 with the IC3 uh, movement. So I have got to learn a lot of things from colleagues who have gotten a lot of experience in, in the domain. And uh, I continue uh, developing my, myself, my skills through also the platforms that uh, are being offered through these organizations. So when we have, uh, uh, we have, for example, the, the international ACAC, which is having a, a wonderful uh, Facebook page where they, they share a lot of information related to the counseling. And we also have the ICT uh, movement uh, with the ICT uh, Institute and their Facebook page and their website where they, they display a lot of uh, important resources that we can, we can get access. And also there are webinars that uh, the International ACAC is also organizing. So I have also been privileged to be uh, a member of uh, the Hali Access Network, which is working basically on the African continent and aiming at giving access to high achieving low income students. And uh, this group is full of experienced people uh, from whom I could get uh, any information that uh, I'm looking forward to getting. And they have also a, a WhatsApp, a strong WhatsApp group. So these are kind of the ways that I use to improve myself and to better guide my students uh, through that process of uh, applying or transition to higher education. Thank you, Arsin Tigiri. Uh, Brett, uh, thank you. Uh, and uh, from my end, uh, echoing to some of the points uh, that I've seen, 
have really highlighted and also to add some which are also unique is the aspect of, I, I think IC3 to be frank has been very instrumental in terms of just have that eye opener and also to just open that room and window of opportunity where we're able to leverage on a world of resources, a world of personnel. Uh, we, we have been in the game for years, as you've highlighted, and whom we can even uh, start to follow their footprints with their guidance and with their help. I, I think the likes of Prabha, the likes of Shweta, uh, yourself, Kate, uh, Jim, and others. So just follow through and have such opportunities to engage uh, and also to, uh, to, 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 to network and have sessions which capacitate us as, as school counselors uh, has been really helpful. Uh, the other thing that I've also been personally doing or that counselors can also do is the aspect of in-person training. I think uh, the aspect of having some of the, uh, like in our case here in Zimbabwe, we have had some of these international institutions which have periodical visits. Uh, probably they would visit one school. So when you are alert and also when you subscribe to some of their networks, when they come and they do visit, they offer some sessions to, in, to, to school counselors. And to have that commit out to say, like, okay, uh, I'm going to take these two days attending this in-person training, which capacitate me as an individual. I found them to be very helpful and also to give me a broad area of information that I didn't have before. One thing that uh, Mr. Fred mentioned uh, in, the, uh, in the opening uh, remark uh, this afternoon is the aspect of partnerships. So the aspect of partnerships and also networking has been incredible, just building my capacity in terms of partnering and networking skills. And uh, that's how now we have the likes of being able to leverage. So IC3 movement is so rich in terms of networks. So the ability to then now reach out to those networks and then now invite them uh, to just capacitate uh, our students and also carry through with them uh, some uh, some of the things that they do that you don't even know of, but that they know and you can then now copy from there. And we have also really been partnering. I think our students have been following here in Zimbabwe the Education USA uh, offices. Uh, they've been offering so in terms of information when it comes to students applying outside. So basically, I think uh, those are the two fundamental things, the ability number one to attend. Uh, sorry, I, uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, so thank you, Tigira, thank you, Arsene. I actually have a couple of questions. I don't know if we're gonna have time and people staying, maybe we go beyond, but according to our schedule, we have six minutes left. And I, I want to be kind of very fair to our audience. And there are a couple of questions in the chat box that I need to read for for you. What, uh, what is the best way for U.S. universities to reach and connect with the students in Africa? What, what is happening on your end? How, how do you connect with the universities? Um, Tigere, yeah, yeah, unmute, please. Right, great. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Uh, so in terms, we have learned uh, because of COVID-19, we, we have since moved from the traditional perspectives of reaching out to students uh, to say, let's go physical in terms of our institutions. So the virtual platforms have been so incredible. Uh, just like the web phase, uh, which ICT was when we have different universities come, coming through, more than 65 of them across uh, the continents and taking through those sessions. So my, my proposal and my submission this afternoon is that what do they now need to do and be deliberate from our end uh, is those who are in Africa is the ability to create platforms which enable our students who come from the remotest side who don't have access to internet and who also don't have access uh, to power to be able to be part and parcel of these particular sessions. And that vehicle, I believe, will ensure that these opportunities, they reach out to them. So yeah, the, the 
online platforms uh, which are they can leverage on technology vis-a-vis uh, -vis the COVID-19 pandemic that we are really uh, fighting with eco right now. Like now we've got the fourth uh, variant uh, that we are fighting with. So just to say, let's leverage on technology, but in the same understanding, let's capacitate those institutions which are not in a position to be able to join to then I'll do so. Thank you. Thank you. Arsene, yeah. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, we can't deny the place of technology today. That means that uh, universities should have to reach out to students uh, virtually. That is like via emails, WhatsApp. But uh, I would, we would appreciate it uh, if uh, there would be that possibility for the university to to involve the counselor in the communication because uh, seeing that the students are facing that problem, that, that difficulty related to internet connection. So it is, it is sometimes difficult for the student to, to check their, their emails uh, all the time. So it's good for the university to reach out to, to students, but they can choose to involve the counselor who can, who can follow whether the student has replied to these emails or not. So, and then from our level, we are still working on that possibility of uh, creating access uh, to the devices and to internet for uh, these students uh, to navigate their application platform easily. Okay, thank you, Arsene. So for us, it's the same at Enco Education. We do have every week, it's out actually Wednesday, we call it like a college day because every every Wednesday later uh, afternoon session we have, uh, we are actually scheduling those sessions with the universities and throughout the year we are hosting a lot of universities, just giving this opportunity to our students to attend and always record and we always make a recording and send them out uh, to make sure if they are interested and miss, miss this session they can uh, they can uh, listen later. But uh, on the other hand, that uh, like Arsene said as well, because there are still students that maybe they live a little bit remotely from the center and they don't have this 24 seven unlimited internet access or they just simply yeah, maybe don't have even gadget at home to check their email that would be very much preferable if you usually include counselors in the communication. Uh, so the counselor makes sure that the right information is given to right person. Um, okay, thank you. There is another question. Do you have any opinion of why students tend to look more at American universities than say British ones? So what's your opinion about this? Uh... Personally, I would say that uh, you know the the American context is uh, more favorable related to the scholarships, the, the scholarships that they are they are offering, and uh, students tend to consider uh, U.S. universities, and also the 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 thing that the application process is easier for them to. Uh, to to make it to the United States, and some also just uh, appreciate because they they like USA, so they they, they want to go there. So uh, these are some of the little things that I would say about it. Thank you, Digeri. Right, Kate. From my how I would tackle it is lack of information. Uh, just to 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 lack of information. With the American universities, they go all out. We've got Education USA. They do these uh, info sessions. They do these webinars. When you, when you then now look comparatively with the UK universities, they are more silent when it comes to when I speak from where I'm sitting at right now. So basically, because the students don't have much information from the UK institutions, and they've got wealth of information from the American universities that they now tend to, to, to then apply there. I say so because uh, I think from our students uh, that, uh, that we had in 2019 that are now applying for their universities, we've got quite a number who are interested to apply to universities in the UK. Why? Because they got exposed to the information, they researched about the investors which were there, 
and they are so clear. Like this morning, I was a I was having a conversation with one of our students, and it's together. I don't want to do SATs because I don't intend to go to American universities. I want to go to the UK, so I'm going to do IELTS. So that student was very clear. Why? Because they got in contact with the right information that they needed. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Sometimes, yeah, um, there is definitely what we come across less uh, probably the scholarship opportunities. And I cannot agree with T. Geary in the part that even there are some scholarships, maybe this information is not is not really delivered to us or or maybe are visible. On the other hand, it's like a, the, the living, talking about Britain, the living cost and the, um, and the total tuition cost is quite high. But on the other hand, I would say that I, I did have this conversation and the British universities, there is um, uh, very, uh, very uh, specific, for example, we do, we deal mostly with I, IB students, yeah, I mean, all our, most of our schools, they are doing IB, and what we say, in terms of IB uh, scores, British universities for us, they do have very high requirements, um, and um, uh, sometimes while in the US and in, for example, the Canada as well, it's like a holistic approach for the, for the application consideration and the students, they feel more comfortable there because they think that profile would complement to their, for example, not, not all the six and seven IB scores. That's my understanding. And somehow there is an assumption probably cannot tell whether it is true or not, that students think that maybe working after university and kind of the start life there, it's, it's easier in the US and Canada than in, in other parts of Europe and um, and the uk and um, the asia is becoming popular i think we are we're witnessing that one thank you there are uh, so many questions actually oh my goodness we are already four minutes uh, four minutes beyond our um, beyond our time um uh, okay uh, there, there are some questions. If tell me if I missed any. Uh, yeah, there is, uh, there is also uh, something. Uh, there is something uh, that uh, uh, someone brought up, which is very important uh, regarding whether uh, we should include the counselor in the communication or not. I think uh, we need to. Uh, to emphasize on the fact that uh, the students should give uh, their consent before uh, the university include uh, the counselor in the communication. This is very important. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I mean, I don't know from the IC3 if it's okay to go with the question. There are some interesting questions. I'm fine if, um, if we are not penalized from IC. Uh, hi, I know this case comment that some students, the, uh, for some students, the university name is very important. Do you recommend students new destination, university names, and when and how you do that? I mean, yeah, besides those big brand names, um, do you give the students this idea? Okay, look here, you might, you might like this university. This is the opportunity. I mean, how will you do that? Right, um, thank you, Kate. I think um, in terms of what we do, obviously we now don't make big decisions for them, but to adjust the vehicles or catalysts uh, to just ensure that they get themselves uh, with access uh, to the different opportunities uh, where they can then now have a pool of choices to choose from, uh, and then they will make uh, the actual idea, uh, decision on their own. What you do very well and what you strive to do and to keep on doing very well is the aspect of ensuring that they have multiple choices as possible. And obviously, having access to some of these, like our students uh, will come through our program. We say the expectation is that, and that is how we also mark ourselves, each and every one of you, you should 
replaced at most of the Ivy League schools, uh, which are which are in the US. And uh, basically, by that, uh, we know what you want to achieve. We know what you want from them, and you begin capacitating them to ensure that uh, they get themselves um, ready when such opportunities are then come. Then we do have other students like who want to study medicine and law that would encourage to go and apply in American universities. Uh, that would they now uh, find and then they will study locally here at home. And maybe when they then I want to further their education, we then give them the information so that they can get to know where they can get uh, scholarships uh, to then further their education. And thank you. Okay, it was very, very nice talking to you all. We, we got several warnings that we need to conclude our uh, session right now. And I know these questions are, are, are a lot and um, all of us and I know our colleagues from IC3 Africa Committee, um, they are more than welcome to schedule individual sessions and meetings and learn more about the universities that is their best interest. Thank you very much. Um, Arsene Tigiri to IC3 to give that amazing opportunity for us to speak, to speak and to be advocates of our students who we think need more support, more help, more attention. And that's all we do. This is like a, it's becoming our lifestyle now. Thank you again. Um, I put, uh, I don't know, I put my email here in the chat. I think Tigiri Arsene, you are also welcome to put in the chat or uh, you can always get our contacts from IC3 movement. Thank you very much. I see many, many familiar and quite familiar and friendly faces here. Thank you for being with us.